Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about H.H. H. Gregg. And if you've never heard of this store before, then you probably don't live in one of these areas. It's pretty much an East Coast United States thing. Okay, so if you were fortunate enough to have a store in your area, then it's probably already been repurposed into a Big Sandy, a Harbor Freight, or Spirit Halloween store. You know your local retail economy is getting bad when Spirit Halloween starts eyeing your abandoned storefronts. As far as I can tell, a lot of these stores have already been reused, but from what I've read online, it looks like a lot of them are still abandoned. So I've been using Google Street View, looking at some of the old places, and it's pretty outdated. Like for example, my local store, it's already been converted into a Big Sandy, like four years ago, but uh, Google Maps still shows H.H. Gregg. And ironically enough, there's a now hiring banner on the front. So anyways, if you're not familiar with H.H. Gregg, it was an electronics store. A lot of people have compared it to Best Buy, and it is kind of the same in a way, I guess. I just don't think they have as much selection as far as video games, video game consoles, movies, cell phones, things of that nature. It reminded me more of a Sears store, <laughs> to be honest with you. It had a lot of appliances and flat screen TVs. That was kind of their signature thing. Um, they did have other stuff. They had some laptops, small appliances, things of that nature. But overall, it didn't have the selection as some of the larger electronic stores. But anyway, this company had quite a history. Um, they went out of business in 2017. Um, I'll touch on that here in a bit. All right, so the first store opened in Indianapolis on April 15th, 1955 by Henry Harold and Fancy Gregg, hence the name HH. The original store was only an 800 square foot showroom, and at this point it was strictly an appliance store. Nine years later, they moved into a larger storefront, this time selling televisions, refrigerators, washers, and dryers. And of course, I had to check out the original location on Google Maps. And yes, yeah, definitely a small store. I mean, if it's even the same building. <laughs> Who knows by this point. So anyway, they operated with just this one store for years. Until 1971, they opened two additional stores. So HH would always credit their success with good customer service and low pressure sales tactics. Something you rarely see nowadays. So, with all three stores running successfully, a fourth store was added in 1974. Unfortunately, this was the same year that H.H. passed away, leaving the company to his wife and stepsons. Honestly, at this point, for the next several years, the company is profitable, but they're growing at a slow pace. So, a few notable things during this time frame. Um, there's a few failed acquisitions and mergers, but nothing major, nothing that really impacted the history of the company. And also, H.H. and Fancy's grandson takes over as president of the company. Um, they also expanded outside Indiana, adding stores in both Kentucky and Tennessee in 1991. So with the company growing at a slow pace, they're very successful. So keep all this information in mind as we go forward, because this will be important later. As the 90s roll in, all this is about to change. The year is 1999. The Yankees have just won the World Series, Bill Clinton is president, and H.H. H. Gregg is looking to acquire Sun TV of Ohio. Okay, so maybe these aren't all major events, but it was for H.H. H. Gregg. This would be their first acquisition, valued at over $87 million. So with this deal, it would add 50 new stores. However, the deal ended up falling through but they did end up purchasing 15 of Sun Television stores after the company went bankrupt. This would mark a major turning point in the company's history and make them a major player in the electronics industry. So another important note from 1999, the founder's grandson, Jerry Thogmartin, would take over as company CEO. So at the turn of the century, expansion was underway, and in 2002, they opened a new store in Atlanta. Two years later, they opened a store in Alabama. A year later, in 2005, they would open two more stores, one in South Carolina and one in North Carolina. So this brings their store total to 79. 
An important note from this time period. Up until this point, the company has always been privately owned, so we don't know a whole lot about their finances. We just know they're doing pretty steady with all their growth. So with that being said, the company does go public in 2007, with initial shares selling at $13. As I said before, we don't really know the strength of their finances, but everything seemed to be going good, and it's been reported that the company had very little to no debt. So with that being said, in 2008, you know, the economy crashed. But it seemed as if H.H. Gregg was just going to coast through unharmed. So they really start ramping up their advertising at this time. They sponsored Lucas Oil Stadium, which is the home of the Colts. They had an entire wall of flat screen TVs. They also got into advertising with Formula One racing. Also during this time, we started seeing a lot of H.H., who was their mascot. He was basically a talking circular who just ran around the store talking about deals. For the 12 deals of Christmas, HH gave to me $1.99 TV. Oh, HH, looks like you put on a few TVs. Yeah, I overordered, and it's the perfect time to shed a few products at the 20. They were also really big on their Christmas and July sales. I remember seeing commercials about this and seeing the advertisements. Remember when you used to get ads in newspapers? So in 2009, it was the biggest event in their history. They sold me a 55-inch plasma TV. Not really a big event, but it was a nice TV, and it was a good experience. I remember the salespeople being knowledgeable, and it wasn't a high-pressure situation. Also that year, they started selling video games and video game consoles. And not long after that, they partnered with Cellular Connections to start selling Verizon wireless cell phones in their stores. There was also some rebranding around this time. I remember seeing H.H. Gregg, all one word, and not H.H. Gregg, if that makes sense. I'm not really sure what the new logo is supposed to mean, if anything, just a new image. I don't know. So with their new stores and growth at this time, it would bring their store total to 125 stores, and then 22 additional stores were on slate to be added in 2010. So during the retail apocalypse at this time, amazingly, H.H. Gregg was actually adding stores. So in 2010, their stock's at an all-time high, selling at $30 a share. So during this time, there were also major plans to take over former Circuit City and Lennon and Thanks stores, both companies that didn't survive the apocalypse. So I'll be honest, I had to Google Lennon and Thanks, and yeah, well, they just sell Lennon and Thanks, as I figured. So all these things would be a big deal, and it would raise our total store count to 228 stores across 20 states. Then in 2012, their CEO, Jerry Thogmorton, dies unexpectedly from complications of meningitis of all things. A lot of people would say that's the turning point because he was their leader and he had a lot of innovations and new ideas. So as you can expect, things kind of started going downhill from here. So obviously they're opening new stores and they had to take out a lot of loans, which means a lot of debt. So a company that previously had little debt is now drowning with all the new acquisitions. So as the holiday season of 2015 rolls around, the company had a horrible season. And for the first time, they had back-to-back -back quarter losses. So with low sales and high debt, suppliers started requesting cash on delivery and they diminished their line of credit which is not a good sign for a retail or any store for that matter. So with all these things going on, customers started to take notice. They didn't have quite the inventory that they had before. I read some online reviews from around this time, and of course people are complaining about lack of inventory and just not having things in stock. But I looked at their website from around this time, and actually it looks pretty good. It looks like they have a pretty good selection of stuff. So I don't know if it was really as bad as people said it was. It looked like they still had a lot of products to offer. So things started happening really fast at this point. Their CEO resigned in 2016, which as you know is probably the worst sign for a company. And during the holiday season of 2016, their store sales dropped nearly 25%. So the company is in dire straits at this time. And in March of 2017, they announced they would be closing 88 of their less profitable stores in 15 states. 
Minneapolis-based company has now decided to downsize. H.H. Gregg announced today it plans to close 88 stores across the country. Now, none of them are here in Indiana, but the stores will be closing in Ohio, Florida, Virginia, as well as other states. And then just five days later, they announced they'd be filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection in hopes of finding a buyer for the remaining stores. Their stock price would drop below 30 cents a share, and the process was started to have them delisted from the New York Stock Exchange. Their creditors started putting a lot of pressure on them to speed up the process. So then on April 7, 2017, after failing to find a buyer, the inevitable happens. Breaking news tonight, the end of the line for Indianapolis-based retailer H.H. Gregg. The company pulling the plug and now going out of business. Good evening, everyone. A deadline to find a buyer passed just about an hour ago. The company tonight confirming liquidation sales will begin tomorrow. RTV6 Chance Walser is live with... So I guess the big question would be, what happened? Why'd they go out of business? A lot of people have blamed the online retailers like Amazon and Walmart, but I think it's a lot simpler than that. Honestly, I think they're just a victim of bad timing. They took advantage of other retailers going out of business, and they tried to capitalize on that market. So instead of just staying where they were, they decided to overexpand, and I think that's the problem. They built too many stores and had too much debt in such a short period of time. I think if they just stayed where they were, they would have coasted right through this. And who knows, they'd probably still be around today. So one thing of note here, if you go to their website, it's actually still active. And that's not because they're making a comeback. It's because a company out of New Jersey has purchased the IP. And you can still buy stuff from HH Gregg. And also, they have opened one store. So there is still one store remaining. You never know, they might make a full comeback in years to come. Anyway, that's all I have for today's video. I hope you found it interesting. And if you liked it, please hit the thumbs up and make sure to subscribe. And I will see you next time.